Okay, I've already made one video where we kind of started working on simplifying out trigonometric expressions using algebraic properties that we know. Factoring, common factors, difference of squares, properties of tangent and secant and all of that. We're going to keep on doing that, but now we're going to look at what's called verification of trig identities. Essentially, when you verify an identity, you say, prove that two things are equal, meaning 2 plus 1 equals 3. Technically, that's an identity, because that equals that, and it's always true. And as far as, if you wanted to verify this, you would just say, oh, well, 2 plus 1 is 3, I know that. So 3 equals 3, and I'm done. That's essentially all we're doing. We're taking two things that are equal, and then we're just going to show that they're equal by using all of our algebraic knowledge and our knowledge of these trigonometric functions. One thing I would say is everything we did in the last video with our algebra, while we called it simplifying trigonometric expressions, it's actually verification of identities because I won't rewrite them all because I want to do something else. But essentially, we started with some expression over here, and then we kept on simplifying it down, and we got some final answer over here. And essentially what we said was this equals that, which means these two things form an identity. A equals B. The stuff in between is what we're actually going to be doing now, which is exactly what we were doing last time. So it's nothing new, it's called something new, but it's really just the exact same thing again. So, let's see. Suppose I have this. I want to verify that cosine of negative x times tangent of negative x over sine x equals negative 1. So essentially, these things are equal. We're verifying them, and again, I say this as a teacher and as from looking at the problems in your book, these are equal, which means the math will work out, the algebra will work out. Essentially, we just need to algebraically show that I can turn this thing into that thing. And uh, I would say this, I look through your book, a lot of people will do verification of trig, identity, trig identities different. Some people will say, start on the left and make the left-hand side the equal sign look like the right-hand side of the equal sign. Some people will say, start on the right, make the right look like the left. Some people will say, start on the left, do what you can, start on the right, do what you can, and see if you can somehow make them both look the same. Your book pretty much does all of those. Ultimately, I don't really care what you do, whichever way works best for you, but I would prefer, and the way I'm always going to do it, start on the left and make the left look like the right. You can do it different ways, but that's the way I prefer to do it, so that's the way I'm always going to do it and write it out, and that's the way I'll be showing you. So for this, I want to make this thing on the left equal negative 1. How do I do it? Well, first off, cosine of negative x. We remember our properties for even and odd functions. Let's see. The graph of cosine really quickly looks like that. Well, that's an even function. Definition of even functions, f of negative x equals f of x, which means cosine of negative x is the same as cosine of x. Okay, tangent. Well, really quickly, just to draw a quick graph, that's tangent. Tangent isn't an even function. It's actually an odd function. Definitions of odd functions, f of negative x equals negative f of x, which means tangent of negative x equals negative tangent of x. Okay, good. Well, if nothing else, I got the negatives outside of the x's in my trig functions. Now I can keep on going. Well, let's see. The negative I can pull out in front because everything is multiplied. And we said last time, well, I'm generally better with cosine and sine, tangent not so much. So I'll convert tangent to sine and cosine. So then this will become negative, the cos x stays the same, tangent is sine over cosine, and then I have this sine x on the bottom floating around. Well now, just simplify. The cos x here cancels the cos x here. 
the sine x here cancels the sine x here, the only thing left is the negative 1, because everything else is gone. And we're done. So we only took like two steps and we're good to go. But again, that's essentially the idea. I take what's on the left, I manipulate it algebraically however I can, and end up with what's on the right. And I would stress, again, some of these may take a few more steps, some of them might take four, five, six steps. Ultimately, if you're trying to solve them and they take like 37 steps, you can do it that way. Generally speaking, it shouldn't. These problems are designed to work because they're true. It's no different than 3 plus 1 equals 4. They are true, which means it has to work out, and it has to work nicely using your definitions and the properties you know. So if you're somehow lost and this is taking 27 steps, go back, start again, try a different property, try a different algebraic trick. So let's see. What else can we do? Uh, oh, this will be a good one. 1 over 1 minus cos x minus 1 over 1 plus cos x equals 2 cotangent x cosecant x. And again, I would say, in theory, you could manipulate the stuff on the left and see what you can get. You can manipulate the, stu the stuff on the right and see what you get. You could try to mess around with this, mess around with that, and get them to both look like something else that's equal. Your book might do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm always just going to start here and make this look like that. So our question becomes, how do I make this thing look like that thing? And again, the goal is for you guys to develop the kind of algebraic understanding of looking at this and saying, how is this different than that? Well, right here, this is two fractions, something minus something else, two terms. This is one term multiplied together, which means ultimately to make this look like this, I have to turn two terms into one term. How do I do that? Combine them. It's what we did uh, in the last video when we were messing around with this. So take these two fractions, turn them into one fraction. Let's see, I need a common denominator. The common denominator will be 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x. And again, all of you know how to multiply that out, so I'm not going to write it out long form because this board won't be big enough for it. But my denominator will end up being 1 minus cos x times 1 plus cos x. I'm aware I can multiply that out, but I'm writing it this way just so we can see it. Then, I'll do 1 times 1 plus cos x, which is 1 plus cos x, minus, in parentheses, make sure you put the parentheses there so you can distribute, 1 times 1 minus cos x, which is 1 minus cos x. Good. So now we have one fraction, one term, which is along the way of what we want here. Now simplify things. On top, 1 plus cos x minus 1 minus minus cos x. Make sure you distribute the negative in. So I get 1 minus 1, which is 0. That goes away. Cos x minus minus cos x is cos x plus cos x, which is 2 cos x. There's a 2 there, which is a good thing, because we apparently wanted 2. So it looks like we're going in the right direction. On the bottom. You guys all recognize that as the difference of squares, so that becomes 1 minus cosine squared x. And now the question becomes, what do I do? Somehow I need to turn 2 cos x over 1 minus cosine squared x into 2 cotangent cosecant. And here is another one of those algebraic tricks. We said in the last video, anytime you see sine squared plus cosine squared, immediately turn it into 1. It's my, it's my Pythagorean identity. But, by the same token, if sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, you should also quickly be able to manipulate this. In this case, if I subtract the cosine squared, I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Well, there we go. 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x. 
So we can actually replace my denominator here with sine squared. That's another standard trick when doing these things that you want to recognize. If it was 1 plus cosine squared, we couldn't do that. But there's 1 minus cosine squared, we can easily make sine squared. You want to recognize that. By the same idea, if it was 1 minus sine squared, we turn it into cosine squared. And then on top, I get 2 cosex. And now, let's see. Well, what can I do? This takes maybe a little bit of practice or seeing it. But ultimately, if I need two terms, write the denominator as two terms. Meaning, this is 2 cos x over sin x sin x. That's what sine squared is. Now, this kind of combining group. I have a 2 right there. Then I have cosine over sine right here. By definition, cosine over sine is cotangent x. And then right here, I have 1 over sine. Sine is reciprocal of cosecant, so 1 over sine is cosecant x. And I get 2 cotangent x cosecant x, which is exactly what I want. I, I know these take practice, and I know I only got to do like two of them in this video because they take a while to write out. You will be spending time writing out a lot of algebra. That's kind of how this works. I have to go to class now and essentially go over these exact same examples with my seated class. But I will upload these videos later in the day, and I will make more of them because, again, I know this takes practice to kind of get the algebraic idea of how to do it. So I will make more videos just so you guys can see a lot more worked out and see the tricks worked out so that you can develop them for yourself.